Hey everyone, before we get into my chat with Crystal, I want to tell you about Patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. That's right, Patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. And what's there? Well, what's waiting for you there is your passport into Hot Dog Club. In Hot Dog Club, you get bonus episodes, listener questions episodes, and movie club. For $5 a month, you get the bonus episodes. $7 a month, you get the bonus and the listener questions episodes. But of course, the most sophisticated, exquisite, and rewarding option is the $10 a month option, because then you get all of those episodes, plus entry into to movie club and when you're part of movie club you can watch the movies with us submit your comments questions and theories and then me and my guests get into all of it recent hot episodes of movie club include alaska thunderfuck joining me for don't tell mom the babysitter's dead ms cracker and caitlin joined for the fifth element trixie mattel of course has joined for contact scream and most recently dropped dead gorgeous and will be returning for scream two three and four as well as the shock treatment movie club which will also feature miss jessica harper this week i'm taping two movie clubs with peaches christ the first for Heathers, the second for Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. And in January, I'm tipping two with Willem for Casino and A Star is Born. So hop on over to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends, get your ticket into Hot Dog Club, subscribe to the regular show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this now. And now that you've done all that, it's time to listen to my chats with Crystal, the first of which was taped the week of the premiere of Drag Race UK, so we hadn't seen a frame of the footage yet. And then this episode is capped with a follow-up chat taped last week to talk about what happened since the show. A Russian ballerina stopping on a bureaucrat A perky suburban housewife who just got into scats Give it a beep, boop, 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 bow, boop, boop, bow. It's whimsically volatile Do you live in L.A.? I do live in L.A. Yeah, I live in West Hollywood. Okay. And I've been there about five, no, I've been there four years, L.A. total five. And I originally landed in North Hollywood and uh, was there about a year and mm-hmm. then found the place I'm at now in West Hollywood, which mm-hmm. I love. It's in between Melrose and, oh, I shouldn't say on the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's near a street People that you've crazy. heard of. Yes. Right. That's the thing. That's yeah. the thing. One time Brian and I were having a, a cigarette uh, on the balcony and some folks from, I think, Scotland were walking by and they were like, hey, wait, is this where you guys do the podcast? It was oh so fun because I didn't expect it, but they were lovely. They were just like, hey, that's great. And I was like, no, cool. no, we hire this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is just, we're just checking this place. We take yeah. photos here. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And so, of course, we rolled right into it. But of course, I'm speaking with Crystal. We'll see you now. Yes. Yes. Hello. Hello and welcome to Whimsically Volatile. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah, nice to be here. Mm. And we are at uh, Mike and Maddie's place once again. And thank you for hosting. Thanks, Maddie. <laughs> Maddie's just made me a pisco sour, so I'm feeling right at home. Oh, terrific! Now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, somewhere between backpacking in Peru and lovely London penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite cocktail? Ooh, yeah, I think it must be a pisco sour by Maddie. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, that, I or, wanted, I wanted, I wanted to get it on record. That's all. Yeah, you, know. you also can't beat a good margarita. <laughs> you are adding to the Canadian content of the show because you are from Canada. I am indeed. I am. Do do you know that um, all broadcasting Canada has a rule about Canadian content? I do. And I love this whole thing. My parents are Canadian. Okay. So, you know, I I, I thought that was just a a suspicious turn of phrase, but yeah, Canadian (laughs) content. I do like a suspicious turn of phrase and you can count on me for at least three or four of them throughout this uh, event. Yeah. Can't wait. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Canadian originally. And yeah, so now I can be broadcasting Canada and they can say that they've got Canadian content on their TVs. That's right. That you're helping people. (laughs) That's what you're doing on a grand scale. I mean, that's why I do drag. I thought so. To help people. Yeah, Yeah. to help people and also to change and liberate the television systems Mm -hmm. of Canada, Mm -hmm. which would be the CBC. Now, what are the other um, networks there? I don't know anymore. It's been so long. Okay. But CBC is the is the BBC of Canada. It's the the PBS of Canada. Okay, sure. And, yeah. And you know, it's it's a big channel, but it's I think when I was growing up it has like a parochial kind of Oh, okay. vibe. Sure. But yeah, any 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 television or radio station as far as I'm aware in Canada needs to play a certain amount of content that is Canadian. Strictly Canadian. So we've been really pushing Avril Okay. and Shania for years. <laughs> um, yeah. Celine has a place in our hearts. You know, sure. we, well, as a Canadian, you're never quite sure how big a Canadian artist actually is and whether or not they're just being, you know, pushed down your throat. <laughs> right, right. Because they're Canadian and like, we got to play. Like, yeah, April, we have. We must. There's some uh, funny things about Canadian bands that never were pushed in the States, like Rough Trade, which is a big mm-hmm. favorite band of mine. And we had mm-hmm. Carol on the show. In Canada, Carol was hosting the big award shows and everything mm-hmm. like that. Is RuPaul's Drag Race UK going to be airing in Canada? It is, yeah. So the, I think it's on two stations. 
again, things that I don't know about, but out sure. TV and Crave TV. I've been out of Canada for 10 years, so things like media. Yeah. They all change, don't they? Just things slightly. Things stream now. Just and, slightly in the, those you know, few years. Yeah, yeah. Now, where did you grow up in Canada? I grew up in Nova Scotia, so... That's insane. That's where my parents are from. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? Uh, absolutely true, yeah. From Halifax? Uh, my parents were from just nearby. Not Halifax, but... All I remember is Nova Scotia, and I've been there a million times mm -hmm. because my dad has 11 siblings. So the number of uh, funerals, weddings, yep. and so on yep. were you know, staggering. So yep. yeah, I've logged many, many hours in lovely Nova Scotia. Wow, that is so bizarre. <laughs> so I grew up yeah between Halifax and the uh, the country about an hour away from okay. Halifax. Yeah, um, I was born in Newfoundland, actually. That's That's where my folks are from. Newfoundland is a Newfoundland. different province. Is it? Yes. Okay. Well, listen, uh, listeners, don't tell me to this. I, you know, I don't talk about this with them all, every day, right? Yeah. Maybe I should. So I'll check in with them and let you know at another time. So they're there from one of those two places. Nova we'll, Scotia we're is what I feel. Check that, listeners. We are. We are. So they're from Canada. I'll say that. Yeah. But at, yeah. very where and you are. Very yeah. where I am. <laughs> East Coast. It's rugged. You need to picture um, stony shores uh -huh. and windswept trees mm -hmm. and um, Arctic chill. Yeah. Poverty. <laughs> A, a failed coal mining industry, a failed fishing industry, mm, a mm. thriving logging industry. Oh, so okay. really, we're just stripping that part of the world bare of all uh, yeah. one resource at a time. Terrific, yeah. terrific. Yeah. And now that that you've left too, they're they're short. Well, a now there now there's a real drag shortage. That's true. What's the drag scene like in Canada in again, general, but also specifically the area that you grew up in? Again, I'll be honest. Um, drag happened to me post Canada. Post Canada. Okay. So. The drag that I know in Canada is very much drag of 10 years ago. Okay, sure. Pre-drag race, pre all of that. I think it's happened in the same the same way in Canada, in the same way it's happened all over the world sure. as, as a result of drag race. Right. Um, but the drag that I know was very much, you know, the drag that we all knew 10 years ago, which was a little bit tired and, and a little bit uh, corny, desperate, which is will, actually, or... you know, a tradition that I'm still upholding, tired and desperate. <laughs> but <laughs> and, and, you know, and bless you for that. Thank by you. The way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, so you came to drag later when you moved to the UK. That's right. Yeah. So that's why it kind of makes sense for me, I suppose, to be doing Drag Race UK because, well, of course, yeah, I started drag here, and um, you're yeah. you're a UK drag queen. Yeah. 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 My drag is British. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> what made you move to England? So my mum is British mm -hmm. and I was living in Montreal. So I left Nova Scotia and I moved to Montreal mm -hmm. and I was working in kind of sales jobs in fashion and I had a nasty breakup and the town just didn't feel big enough for me and sure. him anymore, yeah. even though it's a big city. The Anglo gay scene in Montreal is very small. So I don't know. I just thought I need, a, I need a big city moment. I need to go and make my fame and fortune. I need to go be the gay in the big city. Yeah. And my mom is British, so I had a British passport, and it just kind of made sense to give London a shot. But I thought, oh, I'll just go for a year. <laughs> It'll just be a year. It'll yeah. Be, and just, like, go check it out. Sure. See what happens. Yeah. And, um, I have this kind of personality trait where when I try something, I need to become the best at that thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really admit defeat easily. And so London really kind of tried to break me in that first year and, and I was like no 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 I'll show you <laughs> so here I am 10 years later um so you love a challenge yes and what were some of the challenges that you faced the first year or two when you were here oh well I, I mean I warn all my Canadian friends who visit and or who attempt to emigrate because within the first couple of months you're really going to be tested London likes to throw things at you and see if you've got the nerve for it mm -hmm. um I got off the plane and a bottle of water exploded in my bag and destroyed my laptop and hard oh drive and camera. So I kind of arrived with nothing uh -huh. except my middle class education. And, <laughs> and your and delightful little thing yeah. accent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then about a week in, I was running for a bus and tripped and fell and broke my hand. Oh my God. Um, so just like little moments like that, that kind of make you go, Oh, have I done the right thing? Is the universe saying back off? Mm hmm. But, uh, Those can be scary moments, too, yeah. because you can be really excited about something and then you get somewhere, even taking a trip, like my trip here, uh, the Airbnb I booked for the first night was horrific. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there's solutions to these problems and you know you can book somewhere else and you take care of it. It might take a few hours, mm -hmm. but you just have that pit in your stomach like, 
Oh, fuck. oh I've done it. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, I screwed up. Yeah. I can't do these things. I yeah. don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. But to do that on a grander scale, when I mean, you're like, I've moved here. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is a choice I've made, and it's. I've only got a one-way flight, so um, <laughs> I better make this work. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you move in with family, or did you have your own place when you moved here? No, I did not have my own place. I relied on the the hospitality of acquaintances, essentially, mm-hmm. for the first month until I found my own place. But, you know, I didn't really have a job lined up. I, did, I just had some savings, so... Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. Certainly, And yeah. London is incredibly expensive, <laughs> and it's hard to get a decent job yeah. when you're kind of new to a whole scene. Oh, so yeah, it's hard to acclimate in general. Uh-huh. So to find a job. Yeah. And I think you were talking about this on your episode with Sophie. You know, it's hard to even order a coffee That's in, true. in a place like the UK, even though the language is the same. There's just these subtle differences <laughs> that right. make you completely incomprehensible yeah. to British people until you figure out that it's a bin and not a garbage can. <laughs> no, true. And that just only adds to the alienation that you're feeling uh-huh. with the difficulty of finding a job, the dislocation, etc. Yeah. And plus on the back of a bad breakup, too, you're still nursing those feelings. And how long were you two together? Oh, uh, about three years. That's a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, so it, it takes is a long time. when you're in your early 20s. Yeah, no, it's still I mean, it's a long when you're time. 16, because I'm obviously still in my early 20s. So. <laughs> well, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but thinking about it now, being in your early 20s, yeah. you think, well, that's a long time for yeah. a 16 year old. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And 16 to 19, very formative years, mm-hmm. sure. Especially mm-hmm. to be working on your own and out of school already because you were so advanced. <laughs> yeah. 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 And bravo to you on that, by the way. Thank yeah. you. You're quite yeah. welcome. You're quite welcome. When did it start to turn around? Like the first year, the second year? And, and also, when you first landed a gig, what was it? Work-wise? Yeah. So I worked in fashion and I kind of did um, like wholesale kind of jobs in fashion, but those did not pay very well because I was working for like independent London Fashion Week designers mm-hmm. who had no money. Um, and Classic, I, was just, yeah. I was kind of clawing my way in. So sure. then I was working three or four other jobs at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked in a gay pub. I did like fancy waiting, like holding a tray of champagne flutes in in art galleries and sure at, okay and at mm-hmm. store launches and things yeah well fashion's a tough one to get into right yeah. i mean even though you're already in it but like yeah. to now in a new city it's not the most welcoming of um industries is it no um and i think i had this idea that it was an industry that would make me a cool person if i could kind of break into it and get in there and of course you when you're determined you're yes. gonna see it through so the I, end and i did and i got in and I worked for three or four different London Fashion Week designers and I did all the fashion parties and I did all of the, you know, the stuff that looks really glamorous to a Canadian from the outside. When sure. you look at someone living in London, you're like, of course, yeah. that's the, you know, that's what, <laughs> that's what making it looks like. Yeah. What would it be like a uh, breakdown putting together a fashion party? Like when you're working on that side of things, when you're putting together an event like that? Uh, so I was working more in, in business development for fashion designers. So I was doing the wholesale of the collections. Oh, I see. So I wasn't doing the parties, but I was going to parties. Ah, okay. I was, I was, I was attending a lot of fashion parties. And I think people could figure out what that looks like. So we don't need to break that down. No, So we'll scratch that question and just move along. Okay. (laughs) So you're doing that. Yep. And it was cool because you know, these were like startup brands that Mm -hmm. were really creative and making amazing things. But, um, ultimately you are just selling things that people don't need. And uh, I think I was kind of morally a bit conflicted about that. Really? Yeah, because basically you're just making really expensive, lovely things that really wealthy people are going to buy and wear. But like it Mm -hmm. felt really detached from what I was, what my experience was Mm -hmm. and kind of inaccessible to anyone that i knew and it just it just felt a little bit off sure so then i sold out and went and worked for um like a international jewelry brand Mm -hmm. but Um, selling out has its uh, benefits mm -hmm. doesn't it? exactly and then i had finally had some money for the first time in london quite a relief and i was selling um crystal jewelry ah Ah. i sense a theme Mm. the plot thickens (laughs) the plot crystallizes (laughs) indeed (laughs) now once you had a bit of money and you're in london i imagine the pressure's gone a bit and you're starting to enjoy yourself and feel yourself in london exactly yeah that was absolutely wonderful and i um uh i met a man that was uh, a good thing yeah uh who is now my husband oh well that's lovely yeah and And how long have you been together when six years six Mm. and a half years congratulations thanks yeah when did you get married this summer oh wow yeah it's a big year for you oh god it's 
just <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it's the stupidest year anyone's ever had. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's any like other grand things that you can do this year to pack it in in the last couple months of the year. I don't year. know, like run for an office? Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. What are the elections like around here? A mess. <laughs> a fucking shit show. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a, a little <laughs> yeah. bit of activity going on right just now. Just a Isn't little there? thing yeah. called Brexit. Just a tiny little thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll throw your hat in the ring. You know, yeah. see what happens. It's time. Yeah, it is. Um... The answer you need from the Great White North. Just if it's, if you want a slogan, there's one. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad Queen of Can- Queen of the North is taken, isn't it? <laughs> true. How true. Dare she? Ah, oh, the, the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she got in there by months. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're doing the uh, more comfortable life. You uh-huh. your husband, now yeah. husband. But I'm kind of wearing a suit to work, and I'm in this quite like heteronormative. Uh, environment for the first time in my working life ever Mm -hmm. and suddenly I've got to play all of these kind of like uh, respectability politics and like uh and it's just quite weird and and I felt really stifled creatively because even though I had no money before at least I could wear nail varnish to work and dress however I wanted and Mm -hmm. um, be a queer person right suddenly now I'm wearing suits to work and I have to modify uh uh-huh and and I'm traveling around the country meeting old white dudes and convincing them to invest in crystal jewelry and it's just like it's just very 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 strange sure more dislocation really you know you get one aspect of your life sort of sorted out the money's coming in but then you find more alienation in a a way so then that kind of led me to start doing a bit of performing and event producing on the side Mm. which kind of led me down the slippery slope (laughs) to drag (laughs) now had you ever done anything like that before in terms of event planning or uh, organization or throwing parties yeah a very small bit so when i lived in in montreal i organized a few kind of neo burlesque shows Mm -hmm. which i guess was kind of where the the cool kids went to perform Mm -hmm. pre-drag taking off in the in the way that it right, has. In a sort of global sense. Yeah, 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 right. There were a lot of neo-burlesque shows mm-hmm. around that time. And that could encompass uh, music to... Yeah, uh, yeah and like queer-lesque or... or uh-huh, sure. Um, we had nerd-lesque then. Oh, great. Yeah. All of that stuff. So I was, um, yeah, kind of taking my clothes off on stage and... Always good, again. And, yeah. yeah, and um, enjoying that. And then when I moved to London, I didn't really have the know-how or the connections or anything to think I could produce events. So I kind of parked it. And also, you know, you you are basically trying to think about how am I going to put the money together for yeah. a place and everything. So yeah. it, go, it gets filed. Yeah. 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 It got filed. Yeah. But then suddenly I had this job where I could, everything was quite stable. And uh, yeah, it meant that I could kind of look at that again. And I, I knew my way around London. I knew where things should be. And I knew the right people. And I, right. knew, I basically yeah. just knew how to do it finally. So um, I started producing uh, shows and I had... Sorry, this is all very convoluted, but... No, 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 um, That's uh, you've heard the show. That's what we like. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Let me, let me just wrap this yarn a bit tighter then. Yeah, no, uh, I like uh, all the details and all the little valleys and everything that uh, life goes through because it, I think it's really interesting to talk about when you're doing really well, but you're dissatisfied because it's mm-hmm. a weird thing uh, you feel to complain about, if you will. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you're like, well, I have nothing to complain about, but mm-hmm. yet there's something in you that is not being... Um, satisfied yeah it's the typical overachieving gay <laughs> situation i think right because when you if you're going to sell out you're going to do it big time uh-huh sure i'll yeah. show you <laughs> <laughs> i'll show you how much i can sell out <laughs> i'm going to find the people i least want to be with and be with them all the time yes yeah now when you're appearing first... soon on the bbc <laughs> <laughs> see i like that you already have spin-offs going on this yeah. is really great you know it's forward thinking and again the marketing that you talked about before you got it all down what parts of London were you doing the shows in? So East London. I've always lived in East London. Mm-hmm. Um, East London, for anyone listening who doesn't really know London, is like the the Brooklyn of London. Oh, okay. okay. Or the... I don't know. Maybe for LA listeners, like Silver Lake yeah. or something like yeah. that. Sure. Exactly yeah. like that. So. What are some of the towns, and just for people who might have heard some of the names of the towns, what are some towns in Oh, East, so it's all uh, London. But yeah, like it's I mean, uh, sorry, uh, neighbors. Dalston, rather. Yeah. Shoreditch, sure. Hackney. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, those are kind of the main ones. That's where I've I've always kind of lived. Mm-hmm. Um, it's where all the pretentious people live. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I first booked in Shoreditch, yeah. actually. Yeah. But I, I sort of like yeah, went a bit wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, they, again, they mentioned it a mighty boosh. Done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Shoreditch has changed a lot since I moved here. It's mm-hmm. become it's become the Williamsburg of London. So it's oh, just sure. it's where the bridge and tunnel folk come and gotcha and it's just 
it's just party buses from Essex coming in for the weekend and <laughs> puking on the streets. <laughs> Fab, so, great. I, I think anyone who knows London avoids Shoreditch like a... Okay, yeah. See, as an as a ignorant interloper, I just went mm-hmm. straight there. You're like, ooh. Yeah. yeah, but then I was flushed out quickly, so yeah. then, which was good, yeah. yeah. You learned. Mm-hmm. I was um, over in Holborn and all around, yeah. Oh, cute. Hmm. Say it again. Holborn. Is that right? <laughs> no. Oh, is it Holborn? It? Holborn. It? Holborn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When I'm wrong about the pronunciation of it, if someone laughs, I can figure out usually where the, the fault is. I mean, not none of the pronunciation makes sense, but it is fun to listen to people mispronounce. <laughs> no, it is. It is <laughs> yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things where you don't know until mm-hmm. you hear it. Yeah. Leicester. <laughs> do people say that? Yes. Oh, okay. I think because I'm a bit of an Anglophile, so I've heard some uh, names yeah. a fair amount of uh, times, enough that I would go, oh, that's Leicester Square, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was so hoping I didn't screw that one up. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> it's actually pronounced Leicester. Oh, okay, no, right. Not, uh, thank you, because yeah. I'm heading there tomorrow, and <laughs> I'm going to be like, is this Leicester Square? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were some performers that you might have been um, observing at the time that give you a little um, push to do that sort of thing? Well, it was a bit of a funny one, because I was also studying uh, aerial circus in my Oh, free wow. time okay so i was doing classes in that and i was like i kind of want to perform with this but i don't have a space and yeah. i'm completely an amateur so i probably need to make my own space and then what would that look like maybe it would be a variety show and so then I'll, okay who else am i going to book so um it was basically just people i'd seen in nightclubs around east london mm. already that i just reached out to and said hey i think i'm going to put this night on um, sure would you be interested in coming along to perform and i got a few people saying like piss off um <laughs> your fee is ridiculous and uh, i'm actually quite successful and your this is a defensive thing to me and then there were other people who um were interested and those people are, i kind of still work with now mm-hmm. um it's funny that isn't it mm-hmm. like the people that you sort of get with at the beginning yeah they carry on those relationships and it's been really amazing to see kind of everyone's star rise uh, over the last five years that i've been doing shows because um they really have so uh, I'll give some shout outs like Please. Baby Lame is mm-hmm. my frequent co-collaborator and has just been announced as the host for the official Drag Race UK podcast. Fantastic. We both kind of started around the same time and Baby Lame was the host for the shows that I was producing. Yeah. And we've basically just worked together in sync and it's just so happened that this year both of us have had this kind of crazy platform opportunity that's lovely too yeah Yeah, when your friends and collaborators have that going on yeah and then someone else uh called tt bang who is uh an afab queen um she recently was on a tv show called drag sos i was gonna Mm -hmm. say drag lab but it's changed names drag sos and it's like a queer eye makeover show but okay with drag queens sure and i think she was in the second show that i ever produced and you know everyone's just kind of been building on their on their craft and getting bigger and b- bigger platforms which mm-hmm. is really cool but yeah so I was those are the kinds of people that i was booking uh kind of subversive drag queens sure. and circus acts and burlesque people and just kind of the weird and wonderful people and characters that you find in the in the dark alleys of east london <laughs> now when did your uh, interest in aerial work begin i think it was another one of those things where i probably went to a show and saw someone doing it and thought I wonder if I can do that. <laughs> and then you get that obsessive thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I liked how you broke that down before you were like, okay, I kind of want to do this. Where do I do it? How do I do it? Mm-hmm. I think that's an important step for people who want to pursue anything. You mm-hmm. have to think about how, I wonder how many uh, of the bullet points there are, but you got to think where, how, and how am I going to get there? Yeah. And I think, you know, if you actually want to do it because then you stick with it when, when you're terrible for the first time, year or two <laughs> that's true or They're, you're deluded enough to think that you're decent it's <laughs> right. one of the two yeah a comedian's yeah. uh or you know playing an instrument too mm-hmm. it's just miserable the first year do you play an instrument i don't know and i've never had the patience even though i have the interest because i love music yeah and i my dad is incredibly musical he plays the guitar he he makes guitars oh wow um and was in bands my whole life growing up and you know, I would, I'm very much interested in it, but every time I've picked up a guitar, I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is going to be too much work and I don't have the attention span for this. It does take a while. And also mm-hmm. then there's the physical aspect of like having to get a callus on the finger, mm-hmm. which is just, oh, my, my fingers are going to be in pain and maybe bloody for a while yeah. until I get this. And then if I lose the callus, well, I'm going to have to go through this process again. Right. Well, that's aerial circus too. Oh, I can imagine. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what's it like when you first start doing it? What are the injuries and what are the surprising things that you noticed 
uh, in terms of wear and tear? Uh, you're just covered in in bruises and burns, and you just look like you've been at a fetish club all weekend. Basically, <laughs> you're. I mean, I had a class last night, and I've got this big black angry bruiser on the side of on, okay. on my side. So it never stops. Sure, um, sure. You just get used to being a bit battered looking. <laughs> My first trapeze class, I think, um, you're hanging upside down for your knees from the bar for a while, and then a day later, like the bruises formed, and then a day after that, they burst. Oh, fabulous! Yeah, That's so that great. was really pleasant. We all like a little bit of drama, a little yeah. bit of excitement, right? <laughs> yeah. And color. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned your dad and and your mom. So were they both living in England, or was one living in Canada and one in England? They were both in Canada, but they, yeah, they split up when I was in my teens, but my mom was British originally, and then they met in Canada. So she's a genuine British person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Genuine yeah. British person. Not like me. <laughs> I'm an immigrant. How did people uh, take to you being an immigrant? The nice thing about London is that very few people are from London. Okay. So mm -hmm. when you kind of realize that everyone's basically trying to figure it out, but I think being uh, an immigrant anywhere is challenging the sure. advantage here is obviously that the language is the same but you know the cultural reference points there's so much that's foreign to you so sure, attitudes and, yeah mm -hmm. and i still find it really frustrating sometimes when people are talking about a kid's tv show presenter from their childhood and i'm just like <laughs> i'm just never going to fit in here <laughs> there's just too much yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. um British people have terrible celebrities and they just <laughs> <laughs> who are some of your favorite terrible celebrities no that's the thing like the ter the really terrible ones are the ones that I can't remember but everyone seems to know oh like, yeah yeah like this Keith person something. yeah this yeah, person yeah. who was a presenter on a stupid tv show <laughs> 20 right. years ago that right. everyone still remembers or like I you know things like Mr. Blobby oh I don't know about Mr. Blobby I just don't understand it and it's like a nostalgia thing but it's this it's this pink blobby mascot okay situation that, yeah like a terrifying barney oh okay All and right. he's called mr blobby i'm gonna have to investigate this yeah, yeah this and sounds I'd, intriguing I, he had a he had a was it a was it a tv show maddie can you explain did you want a glass of uh, champagne yeah oh my god i'm spotsworth <laughs> <laughs> fab yeah we can pause it for the glass of champagne if you want to pour it and then and then uh okay then we'll do chat. mr blobby yeah oh my god i fucking love mr blobby okay <laughs> right let me pour this a glass yeah, fabulous, mm. fabulous. You know, I hadn't taken a vitamin supplement in ages, and I'm thrilled that now I'm taking Ritual Essentials. You know, eating healthy is important to all of us, isn't it? But uh, it isn't always so easy to make sure you're getting all of those essential nutrients every day. Make sure you're covered with the supplements available from Ritual. Ritual's Essentials contain nutrients we don't get enough of in food, and all in their clean, absorbable forms with no shady additives. You know what else I love? I love that it's a no-nausea capsule, because uh, nothing's worse than taking a supplement and getting nauseous from it. Most importantly, Ritual delivers right to my door, and they'll deliver right to your door as well. Ritual's vegan-friendly, sugar-free, non-GMO, gluten-free, and allergen-free ingredients, and their sources are all clearly listed on the packaging. And who doesn't love transparency these days? It's easy to subscribe, and even easier to pause the subscription. For a dollar a day, you get the essential nutrients your body needs, delivered every month no strings attached better health doesn't happen overnight and right now ritual is offering whimsically volatile listeners 10 percent off during your first three months visit ritual.com wv to start your ritual today that's 10 percent off during your first three months at ritual.com wv so we're back after pouring some champagne for Crystal and Maddie, and we're joined by Maddie Patterson. Apologies. <laughs> I'm fucking back again. That's right. Never <laughs> apologize when you arrive with champagne. Right, exactly. And you enjoyed her on the Sophie Anderson episode, and she is going to uh, illuminate the Mr. Blobby phenomenon a bit for us. Okay, I'll do my best. So yeah. Blo Mr. Blobby is a social, um, you know, worldwide phenomenon. He is pink which we love. He has also got a bit of yellow in him. Oh, okay. And yellow blobs, you might say. Yeah, yellow blobs. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm getting a bit of a rude um, situation in my head now as to why he's covered in yellow like blobs. <laughs> rude things on this show. It's very not no, done. No, you know, of course and, uh, not. My no. mum might be listening. Jesus I think, Christ. I think Mr. Blobby looks like the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> I mean, I think he's like my stuff of fantasies. Right. So, I mean... Somewhere but somewhere in that Venn diagram <laughs> yeah. lies Mr. Truth. Blobby. So yeah. Crystal's not in. I'm getting in me. No, no. I'm, so. I, think I'm, I think I'm in, but I just, I'm just bewildered. Attracted but scared. 
weird. Like, I love that something so weird and possibly shit yeah. became such a thing. Oh my God. Absolutely. Like, massive number one global, well, not global, but no, in my head, he's global, global. In, in UK. Global in <laughs> the UK. Global in Hull, basically. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. It, it was the, 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 the toast of Hull. So here's the Mr. Blobby song. Here we go, guys. Brace yourselves. I like a grand beginning for sure. I think this just might be the YouTube person's. Is it? Yeah, this is it. Does it I always start like this? Um, yes. Oh, right. What, what hit song doesn't start like this, Crystal, for fuck's sake? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my dear Lord. <laughs> Holy shit. Yep. <laughs> Like it's a horror film. It, yeah, it is. It is. Speak People, for yourself, Ed. If you're and afraid of clowns, saying. this is. Uh, yeah. Wow. What? Excuse me. Can you hear him? Oh yeah. Oh, I heard him. Oh, he's terrifying. The children in the background are more creepy than Blobby. I disagree. <laughs> no, I have to as well. The children, at least you can say the children are sort of being held against their will. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, it, they, they'd be okay if they just were set free. Exactly. Like, they won't carry this on to their future relationships. Something went around on Facebook recently that was saying that the person inside the Mr. Blobby suit was actually a hard raving lesbian who was on acid the entire time so that wow, okay. is a fact that i can get behind yeah it makes yeah. total yeah. sense there we go we solved the mystery of, of, of mr blobby I mean, yeah i'm not gonna lie i've not heard this song since i was like four years old which was only 10 years ago like, yeah no that's the thing <laughs> crystal 16 you're 14 exactly. and this show's probably illegal yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but no it is creepy and it is horrible and it is gross but so. also fantastic Oh, yeah. Thank We're, God for British sensibilities. There is that element. And I'm sure Blobby had a Christmas number one as well. I think there was a Christmas Blobby. I think, I think wait, you're right. I think I, I saw yeah. him when I was yeah. looking for this this track. Yeah. Mr. So, Blobby Christmas. I mean, Blobby's had more hits than quite a few artists out there you that know, are that's currently true. charting. We're goofing mm -hmm. on him, but, you know, this guy's so charted. Good for Blobby. I mean, I don't think the Saturday has ever even had a number one. <laughs> <laughs> it deserves it. My God, I've had a glass of champagne. I'm being a bit jumps as well. Yeah, what are you talking? Blobby nonsense. Yeah. Oh, is this? Buster Holt. Wait, so the Christmas <laughs> song the Christmas one also starts, starts in the same grand fashion. Mm -hmm. Wait, is this the same song? Is this is the same the, song? Is it the Space Odyssey? Apparently, do, does Blobby go to space? Yeah, maybe there he's is, from. There is an episode. Is really? he from space? Yeah, oh, Blobby okay. in space. Because this sounds exactly identical. Maybe, so. maybe this was Christmas number one. The video I will post online because this is truly horrifying. Uh, when I was a baby, I was obsessed with Bobby. I could see that. That's like a proper baby and it was fixation. So Noel Edmonds, for any UK listeners out there. Well, this is going back to what Crystal said before about uh, British people citing <laughs> these TV presenters that mm -hmm. you're like, who the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah, Noel Edmonds, Google him. And you used to have this show called Noel's House Party every single Saturday night. Um, you'd have like celebrity guests and like you know people get gunged and mr blobby used to just enter just pop in out of no just like an uninvited guest wow so it's yeah. very peewee's playhouse yeah. sort of isn't it? it well yeah kind of a garbage version i, mm. I mean we might be upsetting uk <laughs> listeners with that but there is a whole tradition of uk children's programs that isn't really mirrored in the united states there's lots more of them i mean are they, are they still on today or is it like a regular thing on midday television I'm not a child, so I just technically watch. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> at, at just 14, I think you know you would have some um, insight to this. Yeah. But fine, you want to be uh, kind of <laughs> you want to hold out on me. Cool, thanks a lot. You I know. mean, I don't want to give the secrets away, but um, no, there are like the, what the funniest article I read the other day was that um, so there's this show called Peppa Pig. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And it's quite big in the US and all over the world now. And like Peppa's like a little pig and got a real cute little brother called George. Mm -hmm. and, like it makes you feel guilty for having a bacon butty in the morning. And and they're really. <laughs> I cute. like to. I, I heard it's good to actually eat your bacon butty while watching Peppa Pig. Oh, 
animals. Yeah. Stop. I actually identify as a pig, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my so God. Is, I'm sorry. <laughs> a crystal blade. Is, is the bacon discussion not woke enough, and are, are we being insensitive? Because oh, no. You, it's, please it's, let me know. It's just a sex thing. It's fine. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Because the old Canadian bacon joke that's waiting to be written, yeah. you know. Yeah, right. we can we can put that on a t-shirt. That There you go. Perfect. <laughs> can perfect. I get one in an extra small, please? Because I'm going to go on a diet soon and stop eating bacon. But, but since you brought up sex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um you met your husband about six years ago oh that was a deft trans transition uh yeah so you met him about six years ago <laughs> that's right yeah and what was the circumstances where you met him uh in a gay bar really yep. wow so you've been to a gay bar i have believe it or not once or <laughs> twice in my life i i have darkened the doorstep of a of a gay establishment. Interesting. Right. Well, you did say the thing about the gay pub before, but I didn't know the gay bar as well. I mean, this mm-hmm. is really kind of wild yep. stuff that we're, I think, revealing to people for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. You heard it here first. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in Dalston Superstore, which is an iconic East London gay bar. I had it recommended to me oh, yeah. before it's, coming here. Yeah. It's fab. Um, and it's probably been there for 10 years. It kind of led the way for the queer mm-hmm. gentrification of Dalston. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah. And this is this, we met very much in an age post grinder. So, um, it was refreshing for both of us to kind of meet in person. Right. True. Right. In this um, day and age, if you're not meeting someone yeah. through an app, it's like, oh, but is this real? Yeah. Yeah. But even then six years ago, believe it or not, it was this, it was the same. So, uh, yeah, it's, we kind of did it the old fashioned way. Mm. Now, are you uh, very old fashioned? Are you monogamous? Are you monogamous? We are, yes. Sure. Are you? But, okay, cool. Yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. And what's his name? Tom. Oh, hello, Tom. Hi, Tom. I'm sure he's listening. Hi, Tom. Hello, Tom. It's like a good kit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, back to the childhood thing, because we were talking about TV shows and stuff with kids. What sort of films and music were you into as a kid? Ooh, so I was a real gay nerd. We lived in the country when I was like from six to 12 uh-huh. and I was really into fantasy and magic and comic books Ooh. and video games and I kind of lost myself in all of those worlds. Dungeons and Dragons? Yes. Do that? Yeah. Okay, Warhammer. Yeah. Well, now what's Warhammer? Warhammer is where you buy those little figurines and paint them and then have mock battles. Oh, I didn't know about you that. You line them up on opposite ends of a table and, okay. and march off to war against each other. Now, and that differs from Dungeons and Dragons how? Because well, I know so Dungeons a little and Dragons, bit about you're that. like, you're a single character and you're all going into a maze together. And now, do you actually have the physical representation of that, like a game board and everything? I think so. Different? I've never really played Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I see. So Warhammer because was more your bag. Warhammer was fun because you got to paint the little figurines. Sure, sure. And you could pick an army and I could be the high elves, which were like lovely and fey and lots of like <laughs> ladies with bows and arrows and oh, okay. like sorceresses. Mm-hmm. That's where you wanted to be. That yeah, was the scene. Yeah. Sorceresses yeah. riding um, phoenixes. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. How can really, you argue with that? You right? can't. Right. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you were into Warhammer. Now, what about music? What, what, what did you enjoy um, listening to? So music kind of happened to me later in life. I was very much influenced by my sister who was uh, a grungy punk Mm-hmm. And there was always music in the house, right? There was because always music in the house. Um, but I kind of just followed along with what my sister was into. So um, bands like Hole, mm-hmm. uh, Garbage, sure. Belly. Yeah. David Bowie was probably my first like real musical love. Okay. Sure. Alongside the- Madonna. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would just I just devoured their back catalogs completely. Do, and you, have then, a, do you have a favorite Bowie album? Ooh, good question. Um, I love the three albums he did in Berlin. Mm. Uh, Low. Heroes. Heroes and... Lodger. Uh, Lodger, well done. I think Lodger is probably my favorite. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, beautiful. And uh, There's a few instrumental tracks on there which are just amazing. Yeah, those are, that is a fabulous album. And what about favorite Madonna album? You can pick three. Ooh, three favorite Madonna albums. Okay. Um, controversially, I'm probably going to say uh, American Life. Oh, I love that. I yeah. love that choice. That's it's, actually a quite a good album. It's a fantastic album. Criminally underrated. Mm. Um, like a Prayer. Mm-hmm. Because you can't not. And <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Keep It Together is yeah. one of the best tracks mm-hmm. she's ever done. Really. Yeah. And, and that Prince song that she Oh, did. yeah. Love, love song, love, right? Yeah, love song. Yeah. Well, that's the reason we forget the name of it, because you're like, it can't be called that. It's not called love song, right? Yeah. It, no, it's love it's song. just the Prince song. <laughs> that's right. The Prince song. The Prince song. <laughs> Uh, third favorite Madonna album. Um, 
I, I, I can't choose. We'll Confessions. leave that one open. And uh, Confessions is a fine third choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that you picked American Life as your top because it's so often um, shit on. But I mean, she has much worse albums. First off, if you're going to be mean about that record. Um, and no, um, what was it? Nobody Told Me? Uh, what's the name of the uh, song? Uh, nobody Knows Me. Sorry. Nobody so Nobody Knows, knows me. me is one of my favorite oh, it's tracks. such a good song. There's a live version of that. <laughs> yes. yes. Every <laughs> gay has listened to that song <laughs> while walking down the street. I, I, it's sorry, like, not but, to presume your sexuality well, because uh, queer, I know fluid, that, whatever. You heard yeah, the Cracker episode. Yeah, yeah I've heard it. <laughs> um, but everyone, I feel like anyone who wears a little nail varnish and likes a Madonna <laughs> track has put that into their headphones yeah, and yeah. flounced down the street. <laughs> I think you're right about that. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right Anyone about that. Anyone who shared that button that low with <laughs> <laughs> sexy chest hair hanging out quick, come on. <laughs> well, you're all very accurate about this yeah. presumption, so I'd have to say thank you. Yeah, And also the live video of that. So great. So great. And have you ever seen Madonna live? Yeah, three times. Wow, okay. What tour? What era? Ooh, so the first one I saw was the reinvention tour oh wow which was for the american yeah Life that's album. amazing that's perfect yeah. yeah and then i saw confessions and then i saw Ooh, i think i saw the, no no i i really did not, did like not that respond album. to that album <laughs> no uh, that is not a great album i don't no. really know anyone who's ever said you know that's kind of one of my favorites oh it's really crap and mdna yeah. is also crap sadly too because yeah at first that's he, she's one of those artists where you're so excited about the album coming out that the first four or five listens you you don't even know if you like it or not mm -hmm. you're just like party's going please please i think it takes please. years actually mm -hmm. to <laughs> reflect properly um what do you think of her latest album um, yes, I like it a lot, but I haven't listened to it enough. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a meme the other day of, of Homer in his garage and Ned Flanders <laughs> is at the door and the garage door is slowly closing. Yeah. <laughs> but Homer is uh, you in your 30s and uh, Ned is music trying to enter. Oh, I see. And, and yeah, I, that is kind I, of tough I have sometimes. kind of entered a little cocoon where no new music enters. Really? Well, yeah. sometimes with Spotify, it's easy to just put a playlist on that mm -hmm. you've enjoyed many other times before. Yeah. What you know can, I just, right? can I just put on and my 90s some... indie ladies <laughs> Absolutely. playlist again? I agree. Yeah. I massively agree with you. Like, just, sorry, just to interject, I've got the most cute dog on my knees on Yo, the that's... planet, by the way. Speaking of which, Buster. I know Buster yeah. is just killing me. Buster, 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 your dog, who is how old? He's 10, oh. but he's a foster dog, so we don't really know his, his story. Mm -hmm. oh. But he's got the attitude of a 10-year-old, you're mm -hmm. saying. I see. Mm -hmm. I could honestly cry. I'm, I've never been happy. I've got a glass of champagne in one hand, and I've got a buster on my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Crystal, for that. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> So when I was talking earlier about being at the Hoxton, uh, I was listening to the original Star is Born, not the original Star is Born. I was listening to the Streisand Christopherson Star mm -hmm. is Born soundtrack. The best. On a loop. Yeah, it's the greatest. Yeah. Um, if you're ever feeling bummed out, just uh, have a drink or a soda pop, whatever it is that floats your boat, and listen to uh, Christopherson Watch Closely Now, followed quickly by uh, one of the Streisand up numbers like Queen Bee. It'll, it'll do you good. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you for that recommendation because Anytime. I don't know that soundtrack at all. So It's a good time. I still haven't seen the new Star is Born, which I have. To. It's the only Star is Born I've seen oh, to cool. my shame. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know. I've seen half of it. Um, it was good because I want to fuck Bradley Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> the fair enough, right? And we all have a bit of Gaga, but no, the Streisand Chris Christopherson one is the ultimate. Yeah, and it's what, I, that's such my know, my favorite era too, like mid seventies to mid eighties. Decision, but yeah, she is. I, I do think Gaga is absolutely amazing in that. She's film. fabulous. She, she's very very good, but I think that the whole storyline felt a bit. Oh, another toxic masculinity tale. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay, just, yeah. And that wasn't like that, that was a third version. There was that was mm -hmm. the Star Is Born was with um, Judy Garland. Yeah, originally. Yeah, and actually, then it was, there was one before. There actually. was one before. Yeah. So yeah, it's like the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah, and they switched it to the rock industry with the Streisand Christopherson one. I think pre prior to that was Actors, maybe. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that's it. Oh my mm. god, fucking Rain Man's back. <laughs> <laughs> Never leaves. <laughs> yeah, Maddie dubbed me Rain Man the other day. Yeah, of, encyclopedic. Uh, <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah. It's just Thank you. I like to put a little creep in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> And what about films? I mean, other films uh, that you've watched, uh, you can pick any of them or favorites. Let's go with favorites. Okay, let's go with favorites. Uh, one of my absolute favorite films is Showgirls. Of course, classic. Yeah, which yeah. is the other origin of my drag name. Ah, okay, so, right. Let's one, get into that as a little sidebar. Now. Yeah, the, so the one half Crystal from the Crystal company I was working for when I started doing sure. drag. Mm -hmm. One quarter Crystal Connors from Showgirls. Mm -hmm. And uh, one quarter just really like crystals sure and then <laughs> you 
add it in a shaker. Yeah. S- stir just, or and, shake, which, yeah, which and, is the, because one will bruise one of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, stir gently. Stir gently. Okay. And, and then strain. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cla- strain. Classic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and now I read somewhere that you said something about um, your, that crystals and your persona are very beautiful but also kind of worthless something like that yeah is that i think about that's what you fair said? dead yeah. behind the eyes is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's what crystal we want. doesn't have a lot going for her beyond um real sadistic sex appeal okay but she'll she'll give you that and that's you know quite a lot yeah it is yeah it is and you could do a lot with that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um she's a um, a powerful force with not that much to say Sure, and not much of a nurturer, you would say. Oh no, That's no, good. no, more of like a biter, <laughs> uh, a terrifier. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. So that's kind of the the origin of the name. And Crystal Connors is just such an icon in that film. When was the first time you saw Showgirls? Nineteen. So I was old enough to appreciate its camp. No, you know what? I'm sure I saw it when I was ten. <laughs> um, you know, at my friend's house. Yeah. On late night TV after his parents had gone to bed. Mm-hmm. And convinced that that's how people had sex. Oh yeah, well it is, isn't it? Only in pools, thrashing yeah. like a harpooned dolphin. <laughs> um, By the way, what the fuck is Caesar, or who is Caesar? Because they talk about. Oh, have you heard Caesar have sing? You heard Caesar sing? He does sing. He sings in the final. Does he? In the end of the film, when she gets crowned the new goddess. That Caesar? Caesar sings. Okay, I haven't seen the film enough. I guess. I, th- well, I got to go back. I, that's and the imp- that is the implication Perfect. anyway. But um, see, I'm not sure. Okay, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check on this. It's another we'll thing. We'll have a movie club tonight. Yeah, it's perfect. On Showgirls. Me, you, and Crystal, and Buster. We'll just watch the whole <laughs> fucking thing. The amazing thing about that movie is the the layers you discover on every rewatching of it. There's, There's quite a few. Yeah, it's it's a really well thought out film that's just un- unfortunately missed a lot of marks mm-hmm. at the same time. And the director felt wildly misunderstood. He wouldn't speak about it for many years. Although there's yeah. a new documentary coming out, yeah. directed by Jeffrey Schwartz, uh, who did the Divine documentary. Yes, it's playing here tomorrow. Actually. It is. Oh wow! So it's already yeah. out. Look at look at that. Mm-hmm. Wow! I thought I knew it, uh, all about it, but that's clearly not. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm desperate to go, but I I can't go tomorrow. But I'm hopeful, I'm sure I will see it. You might have um, a bit of a busy week, so mm-hmm. we, I'm not sure when this is going to air. But we're taping this the week that Drag Race is premiering, and I know we yeah. can't really talk much about Drag Race. We but. can talk a bit. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> so yeah, we're 48 hours. Give me the out. goss, babes. Yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> I'm dying. So uh, just to confirm, uh, it's uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, and it's the UK one. That's about all we can talk about, right? We can we can go a little further than that. Okay. Um, you had the biggest dick. <laughs> definitely, Crystal. Oh, of course. <laughs> she's hung like a horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's the terrifier. Yeah. When did you start performing as Crystal? Um, probably vaguely five years ago. Mm-hmm. But it was a it was a real slow descent into into drag. Okay. I didn't I didn't wake up one day and like and decide I'm going to be a drag queen and my name's going to be Crystal. Right. You were doing uh, the burlesque. I was stuff. doing the kind of burlesque stuff. I was doing some aerial circus stuff, and then I was playing with some makeup. And uh, it's kind of awkward to be introduced on stage as Colin. It's not really a glamorous <laughs> showbiz name. <laughs> He's so sexy. What are you on the back? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> I'm to the stage. So wet right Colin. Now. <laughs> Colin. Colin getting oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's liquoring me up and <laughs> yeah, taking blind. advantage. I know, right? I've got your dog right in my legs right now. I'm, just, I'm delighted. That is not a euphemism. No, it's definitely not. It's real. <laughs> so real. <laughs> Um, so you were maybe growing tired of being introduced as Colin. You were yeah, thinking, it didn't. I mean, it's it didn't really work, and I was kind of playing with makeup a little bit, and mm-hmm. I just decided, oh, I'll I'll just give myself a stage name. But I didn't really know where it was going, and I didn't really see myself as a as a drag queen either, because I still kind of thought of that as like this fully finished, polished, fully realized female impersonating kind mm-hmm. of thing. Now, did were there any drag queens that you were really into at the time that were the uh, idols, if you will? for that uh, assumption no i think i think that assumption was partly formed from drag race and partly sure. from the drag that i'd seen kind of growing up in canada and were there any favorite queens on drag race yeah so where where were we in the in the timeline then probably around season five mm-hmm. so we'd we'd had sharon right. who kind of changed the whole game certainly yeah um and alaska mm-hmm. like two queens that just kind of blew my head apart right so it really spoke to what you are about but then there were already so many queens working in in and around london that i was also seeing and they were the ones that really kind of inspired me to get Mm. into it because 
uh, it just looked like so much fun. And, sure. And it was so creative and inspiring and there were so many different elements. And, um, and who were a few of those? So probably people, like I already mentioned, like Baby Lame. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, T.T. Bang, Bourgeoisie. There's this collective uh, called The Family Fierce. So people mm -hmm. like Ruby Jones, who's another AFAB queen. Um, just these like loud, brash, <laughs> ballsy performers who mm. really uh, weren't taking any prisoners and weren't apologizing for anything. Gotcha. Really cool. Yeah. Um, so you found it a bit liberating to sort of inhabit that. Yeah. And I, well, I was loving just having them come to my night and perform, and it yeah. was so cool to watch them. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to give it a try, basically. Yeah. I started incorporating that into my aerial circus performance. And then, and then I kind of quickly realized that I loved performing, and aerial circus was not something that you can do in many venues. Sure. That's, um, <laughs> yeah. Right. It's really limited. So uh, I came up with an act with some friends. We did a, uh, hocus pocus inspired number Ooh. and we kind of took it around on a low paid tour around london mm -hmm. uh, one halloween and that kind of just got me fired up about coming up with more things and figuring out how to do this whole drag thing now while that's going on what's going on with the work thing because you were at this uh, crystal mm -hmm. gig we'll call it how does that uh, eventually transition to you doing it full well, time it it worked out. Um, it worked out fine because it was a real nine to five. So I was just doing it on the in evenings and weekends when I could. And then none of the ten a.m. gigs that are so popular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those ten a.m. <laughs> drag gigs. Uh, oh, I, I mean, I have done those, but mm. the Crystal cute. Breakfast tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, so you were balancing your Swarovski gig with the drag performances with ease. Yes. Yeah, and then. I was offered voluntary redundancy. Really? Yeah. And so with a nice little paycheck attached and mm. I just kind of took that and ran with it and thought, oh, this is the way out that I was kind of looking for, but definitely too scared to take. And for Americans, uh, redundancy is basically getting laid off. Getting laid off, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just was like, this is great. I'll take this check and I'll run with it and see how long I can make that money last and if I can make this drag thing a, a real thing. And yeah, I haven't really looked back to be honest. That's um, great. And so are you good with money? Uh, no, I'm not. I, <laughs> I've, I'm not <laughs> someone who's like credit carded to the max, mm -hmm. but I also I'm not very good at having savings. Oh, so okay. it was like somewhere in between those. <laughs> that comfortable middle yeah, in between yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. I was doing drag full time and I was like, this is not a career I can pursue. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this, uh, this isn't something that has like long-term feasibility. Even though I love doing it, I need something else that I can do. And it, I know it can't be sales and I know it can't be anything in the corporate world. So sure. what am I going to do? So, I'm, so I started retraining uh, to become a makeup artist for mm. film and TV. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I just thought, oh, I'll just apply for Drag Race UK because it's coming and I'll just see what happens. And, and with obviously no expectation that that would happen. Sure. And, and then it has. So I dropped out of this course I was doing and now here I am maybe <laughs> a drag queen for the rest of my life who knows <laughs> well I think it, there's a pretty good chance yeah, of that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but it still feels weird to even call myself a drag queen I don't actually kind of feel like one mm -hmm. in my in my spirit I feel like a, a person who performs gender sometimes and sometimes uh -huh. people pay for it but um <laughs> it's hard to fit on a marquee though yeah that's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see it in the lights <laughs> ladies and gentlemen a person who Some performs time. sometimes gender and sometimes uh, i forgot the second yeah word. yeah see sorry i i wanted to give you a real proper intro but uh, <laughs> and sometimes people pay to see it sometimes crystal will see you now just crystal just crystal just crystal well i'm sorry about that that's okay because usually i have a bit more background information and i did the research but i go on the twitter handle and then that burns it in my mind yep. do you ever have friends that like they have a name that's not their real name but oh it's like, yeah and then you just call, start calling them that yeah so yep. just crystal okay yeah yep. thank you um uh, no that's fine <laughs> um yeah i absolutely have those friends and it's also weird we live in an age where you know everyone's surname from facebook oh yeah that's right we talked about Showgirls, and uh, were there any films as a youth that uh, sort of inspired you or made you want to do the things you later did in life? Yes, I'm sure. But what am I going to choose for you? 
The one you're most embarrassed of. That's usually the best one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think the one that really sums up my drag is probably the Mortal Kombat film from oh. the early 90s. Okay. Um, is it the one with Kylie Minogue? She's in one of those, right? <laughs> is she? I think she is. Let's look her up. I don't know why Mortal Kombat just sprung to mind, but um, it does feel like a formative moment where I saw <laughs> strong, sexy ladies being strong, ah, sexy ladies. Gotcha. And my apologies. She's in Street Fighter. The oh, adaptation of she's the Street in Street Fighter. Fighter? She is in Street Fighter. Yeah. Yep. She was cast as Cammy as a result of the Australian Actors Guild wanting Stephen E. D'Souza to write an Australian actor into the film. You know, that sounds right now mm-hmm. that you say it. Um, if you're going to have to have an Australian Pick Kylie. I feel like Street Fighter, um, I, I saw it. I don't remember it so well. Mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat was pure camp. Oh, it sounds uh, yeah. up my alley then. I yeah, check just it out. like ridiculous deaths and uh, like I over the those. top sexuality. Yeah. And um, yeah. Shenanigans. Actually, can we watch <laughs> the trailer? You want to <laughs> no, see? No, no, I want to show you. Uh, it's actually from Mortal Kombat 2, and it's, I think it's on YouTube as the best line in cinema ever. Oh, well, I'm down for that. Um, Oh, it's, sorry, it's actually the worst line in script. Mother. You're alive. Too bad you will die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so now I've got to see this now. That was pretty appetizing. They don't need a trailer for that film if they're going to re, uh, recirculate it because that's all you need, that's right? That's really, really quality stuff mm-hmm. there. So th- that's uh, so. That seems like that's a nice influence on on Crystal. That, yeah. The delivery. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. So Crystal is very much that kind of pastiche of um, sci-fi villains and um, cheese, pure cheese, but then mm-hmm. with added chest hair. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll be yeah. like that on the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. You know. <laughs> I love chest hair. Sorry, hi, I'm back. <laughs> Listen, you, there's never a bad time to add that you love chest hair, right? <laughs> I mean, I love it. I hate people who shave the chest. Why? Oh, okay. mm. I mean, unless it's for like aesthetic reasons, like doing drag or something mm. like that. I get it. But like normal day-to-day lifestyle of chest hair, mm-hmm. leave it. It's hot. Well, people should just do what they want. Yeah, I agree well, with that as well. Oh God, so I'm disagreeing with everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but, but I do. And everyone, everyone has everyone has their preference, don't they? And yeah. um, what are your preferences? Uh, ooh, I don't know. Um, in general, like, what what what's your thing? Do you prefer a partner to be shaved, unshaved? I love a mid, okay. a mid level, like a groomed. Yeah, like groomed, a taken care of kind yeah. of situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, like. Like lovely, but not 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 buried. Not sure, being buried in. <laughs> so not too extreme in either direction. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Okay, I love a hairy chest, but a zero mess. <laughs> 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 that's a good. That's a t-shirt in the in waiting to be made. Oh, it's a whimsically volatile match, a nice opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it, it certainly is. It certainly is. Look for that in drag queen merch in about thirty-five days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm DM'd by uh, Craig. <laughs> um so let's get into a little bit of what this year has been like because you mentioned that you just applied thinking well you know i should probably apply to this be silly not to yeah and you're very uh, determined and um comprehensive in your approach to uh new journeys and adventures so how crazy has this year been it's been absolutely ridiculous so the application went in i think around the second of january like Mm -hmm. it was very much at the beginning of the year and You hear nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing. And then all of a sudden they're calling you and you've got three weeks to get ready for the show. (laughs) Right. And we've heard from other queens uh, before that there's a luggage requirement and Mm -hmm. all sorts of things, which I didn't realize until Brian pointed it out very clearly one time that there's a weight requirement on the luggage, Yep, which I was really surprised by. Yep. Um, I guess it's so that it's fair because some queens are flying. Sure. Right. Um, I get it. It makes it fair. But for someone who is just getting in a taxi to go to the to the studio it felt a bit insane to shove everything into suitcases do they and then, actually and w- weigh it when you get they that? do i knew i was overpacked ah. um but the scale they used was too small for any of the bags so everything drooped onto the floor so <laughs> oh. so my my 30 kilo bag was like oh look it's only 13 kilos <laughs> perfect i was very sensible in my <laughs> yeah. packing that's really great so that's a tip for anyone so i had in the prepared future. to <laughs> I had prepared lots of sacrificial lambs <laughs> to be like, I'm, okay, if you're going to make me, I guess I can give you this. Yeah, uh, I guess. To get oh, this God. And I was really going to, I was really going to pour on the dramatics and yeah. make them feel really bad so that I could hopefully keep some of the things 
back. But yeah. um, no, I just got away with it. <laughs> Are you a fan of Graham Norton and Alan Carr's shows? We don't have to say anything about their judging, of course. But Yeah. Uh, I mean, Alan Carr's hilarious. He's just such a camp icon. Yeah. For non-UK folks, if you haven't checked out his stuff, check it out. Yeah, He's like, you know what you said earlier about like how UK TV personalities being shit? He's a good example of one of the best. Yes, he's oh, yeah. not, he's, he's not no, shit. He's fantastic. He's and, so funny. Yeah. And Graham Norton, obviously. Yeah, Graham Norton is your is your sassy friend, but like he's so cutting and <laughs> and mean, but like you love him for it. He's sure. really good. If you've ever, are you a Eurovision fan? Graham presents the Eurovision and just his commentary on it is it's fucking incredible. Gold. Yeah. Hilarious. And his radio gold. show is great yeah. as well. Obviously, you've got M- Michelle Visage as well. I feel like I put her on a pedestal of like a, an expert in drag just because she's had so many amazing people come through her yeah, scrutinizing sure. lens. And so, yeah, standing in front of her was actually, in a, I found more intimidating than RuPaul. And also, I just want her to think I'm good. Whereas I'm, yeah. I was kind of convinced that RuPaul would forget me the second I left the room. But <laughs> I wanted Michelle to think I was a good drag queen. Before we wrap up, I want to know if there's any favorite queens that you had from the last few years. Because it's a different thing when you're mm. actually doing drag and you're watching the show than when you're starting drag. I've been really impressed by Aquaria. Mm-hmm. Because I think she's an incredible performer. Totally. And she's just so polished. And I don't understand how she manages to turn so many looks and every day she's got something new and there must be a team behind that because it's just boggling to think of the amount of work and time sure sure and the building all of that vision for all the looks and everything yeah and uh violet tchotchke is another one that i'm Mm -hmm. obsessed with because you know the the work that she does in in the air on aerial work is amazing and i think her reference points are just so so brilliant yeah um and she's really stunning as well so mm-hmm. i love watching her and they're probably known more for being look queens than they are for being performers but i actually think there's a whole depth to them that's really wonderful mm-hmm. yeah that's right i got to see aquaria at mardi gras earlier in the year and it was fantastic mm-hmm. to see that other side of her and again i just saw violet yesterday mm-hmm. and it was wonderful to see the aerial so i mean you, know, you see clips and stuff like that but to actually see it in person is quite remarkable bring it on <laughs> and uh, one thing i've been asking people lately is what's your skincare routine because makeup can uh, wage a heavy uh tax on the skin oh i mean i don't actually have one mm. i i so you're keeping it mysterious you're holding out on me the skin <laughs> okay. is insane i'm like starving like oh my god there's no pores anywhere <laughs> wow like um no my <laughs> throw me a bone babe <laughs> well okay this is what i'll say so up until a week ago my routine was makeup removing wipe mm-hmm. moisturize that was and like drugstore moisturizer the cheapest one you can get <laughs> um but last week i was offered a free cold laser resurfacing treatment Ooh. which i took oh wow uh which was great it's like a chemical peel but with lasers and cold and except it's not cold it's it's kind of a misleading name it's but interesting like, why would they call it that hmm. i guess it's colder than other lasers maybe? oh i see a chillier laser yeah, yeah. cold laser sounds like a se- late 70s uk band <laughs> or or like a device that would be used against Batman. Yes, right. Get the cold Mi- laser. Get for, the cold yeah. laser. <laughs> Mr. Freeze is very into the cold yeah. laser. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a favorite Batman film? Now that we mentioned Mr. Freeze. Oh, it's got to be the one with Poison Ivy. And, oh, yeah. And Batman Mr. and Robin. Yeah, yeah. Right. The, the Again, camp classic. F- full camp. Yeah. So bad. So bad it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's in uh, a different. Uma Thurman's just chewing up. The oh scenery yeah, in that. It's, well, and Schwarzenegger too. Hello, boys! Like it's, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, Him doing the, all the ice puns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't get enough of that. When I whenever I go to Burning Man, I like to pretend I'm in that film. How many times have you been to Burning Man? Four times. Oh, okay, but it really does seem like a Joel Schumacher set because <laughs> <laughs> everything's day glow and everyone's running around like they're a Mister Freeze oh my God. kind of minion. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's so perfect. The Mister Freeze minions. That's who populates Burning Man. Yep. Schumacher is like a dream guest I would love to have on someday because um, have you ever seen The Incredible Shrinking Woman? No. I think he'd enjoy it. So because he was a set dresser originally, this was his first film as a director and stars Lily Tomlin and the entire thing is in a certain color palette that is like my dream color palette for decorating in, in, at my apartment, which I, my throw pillows are sort of in that line. Anyway, since we're talking in pictures, as we said earlier, doesn't work on radio. Uh, I just highly recommend you check it out. I'll send you a link or something like that. That would be great. Yeah, I'd love to. And um, what's your favorite color? <laughs> oh, um, 
you know, I'm going to have to st stay on brand and say clear. <laughs> oh, very nice. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. You've been the last four years to uh, Burning yeah. Man. Well, and the first time you went, what were your expectations of it? Oh, it's hard to it's hard to expect anything. You just expect insanity, and and it delivers. Okay, because it seems like what with your very uh, determined approach to things, mm. that maybe are you a bit of a control person? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah uh huh. And uh, let me guess that Burning Man allows you to sort of. Uh, discard yeah, you, that yeah you just yeah. get to lose your mind on class a substances for a week in the dust fabulous and, and forget all about control <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you like psychedelics uh yeah uh is this going to be used against me in the court of law one day <laughs> ideally uh, well this is for the private reel which is just merely for uh for you know blackmail basically <laughs> yeah well um, we'll skip that then yeah no i don't i actually don't people talk about drugs on podcasts all the time and i think is that okay well, psychedelics are. There goes my career in politics. <laughs> <laughs> and mine. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's still solid, though, based yeah. on all the stuff I've talked Babe about. Babe, sign for you. Thank you, darling. That's a fucking <laughs> Well, Casey Spooner, you know, running for president in the States. So that's the campaign that we're uh, looking at right Wild. now. Isn't it fabulous? We're going to yeah. have some campaign updates from him. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I feel like we talked in lots of lovely circles. I agree. I it agree. was very nice. Hi, it's Trixie Mattel, also known as <laughs> Bernice. I'm sitting in my room here in Los Angeles, just mm, settling in for the evening. And I just wanted to sit down and, you know, pop a few chewable airborne before I wind down. Have myself a half-eaten, light and fit yo play yogurt, eaten without a spoon. And um, I just wanted to ask, are you... <laughs> Are you gay? I always like to know if a guy is gay. And it just seems like you're gay. You know, you wear barrettes. You know, you wear, you know, you, you wear a polished shoe. Sometimes you'll do a middle part with two hair clips and you'll introduce yourself as Nancy, even though I know for a fact that your name is Francine. And you've been on the run for years. Um, you know, but are you, are you gay? And, um... You know, I'm a long-time caller, first-time listener, and I'll take my question off the air. Thank you. So you just heard my chat with Crystal from my trip to the UK in September and October, and now we have a lovely follow-up to discuss what's been happening since the airing of Drag Race UK. So welcome back, Crystal. Hello. I'd like to know a little bit about what's been happening since the season aired. Oh my God, it's been nonstop, babes. Mm. Uh, the adoration of millions and... Um, Loads of unsolicited dick pics in my inbox. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good uh, bargain there. Yeah, yeah, it's all going great. Um, <laughs> the response has been amazing. People have been so so like supportive of it. Um, I'm I'm currently in Glasgow. We're doing the official UK tour, and just meeting like all of these fans and like having thousands of people seeing us doing what we do best. It's been like it's just been amazing. That's fantastic. I was wondering how you felt about your performance on the show overall, uh, both when you were watching it live and then now when you're interfacing with the fans. I've been surprised by the kind of cult following that I guess I've had. Uh -huh. I don't know, maybe everyone who's been on the show has this, but there's just like all of these people who are like setting up fan accounts for me or doing all these things that I just never thought would happen. And I guess that's because like I think my performance on the show was good, but I don't think it was uh i guess i don't think it was amazing like i just i i'm really hard on myself so i i really see with like a critical eye and watching it back wasn't hard but there was just so many things that i wish i'd done differently or or i wish i could just have a do-over with it right I've, I've grown and changed so much in the last six months since we filmed it that's really what i wanted to ask about because i, I remember in our first conversation and this is of course before i saw any of the footage because we taped two days before the premiere yeah uh, but i really could uh, detect uh, how strongly critical you are of your own work and uh, I, <laughs> some would say maybe overly critical because uh, you can yeah. really see you go into the depths of despair in certain moments uh, in the untucked especially yeah that's just my nature i guess i think i i mean we're getting deep real fast but like yeah i've always struggled <laughs> to, like, i've always struggled, struggled to like like myself very much to be honest with you sure so, well, like, listen, I can relate, you know, I, I can be very, very hard on myself uh, with work and, and everything. And that's an outgrowth of uh, some things I think that you alluded to in um, um, one of the moments in the makeup mirror when you talk about the stuff that happens when you're at school. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, I think 
growing up being queer or different or other in any kind of way really does kind of fuck with you because no matter how much support you have, there's always going to be a whole world out there that's like reminding you that you're different or weird. Right. And you have to make these choices every day of like, do I try and fit in and like hide myself or do I feel exposed, but be myself. And like, that's kind of the juggling act that I think all queer people are trying to do every day. And we're, you know, it's so much better now, but I don't think that feeling will ever go away entirely because it's all, you're always going to be uh, in a small minority. So there's always going to be some, like, even if, even if the world decides that, a hundred percent gay is gay is okay. Yeah. Like you're still going to have to figure out how it feels to be different from the majority. Sure. Um, anyway. And well, and also the, the other thing is too, the, the lingering after effects of the years prior to that, even if you've uh, now arrived or we've arrived or I've arrived, whatever at a place where you feel comfortable with yourself and all that, there's all that stuff that's from the past where it's still, you know, you still have to digest it. So that's uh, something that you, I think all of us uh, grapple with, especially when it comes to being self-critical. Yeah, exactly. And what I, like what I love about the show is that, I have been able to look back and be like, oh, I'm really proud of this thing. I'm really proud of that thing. Oh, and I'm actually better at this than I thought I was. Sure. Oh, if I just believed in myself a bit more here, like I would have, you know, these things would have been different. So it's, it's been really useful to me from like, um, a self-development point of view, I guess. Which is wonderful. And, and by the way, you are wonderful at so many things. I got to say, your, your looks are just staggering. Um, I, I <laughs> and it was fun to have the experience of, talking to you before the show and then getting to experience what you do uh and i'm looking forward to do, uh, experiencing what you do in person when i'm back in london in january yeah i mean that was definitely the part that like i felt the most confident with in the show and and the part that i was the most excited about showing like i loved i loved doing the runway i loved i loved the process of coming up with those looks before like in the weeks running up to the show it, I love that creative process. So it was really, really, really fun for me. And also, by the way, you were, you know, you won the uh, reading challenge and you were more of a, com <laughs> far more of a comedy queen than you really thought you were. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, I think that was a dispute, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're referring, uh, if you're referring to Snatch Game, I mean, you still perform better than many other queens who have, you know, fallen down very hard on that challenge. And you were up against two of like the, brightest uh, performances ever on Snatch Game. So, you know, that was a bit of a tough one. Totally. I guess what I've learned is, like, I can do okay when I've got a chance to prepare. Sure. I think that I can write comedy. I just don't think that I'm very good at, like, the improv side of things. And and that's down to, like, self-belief and, like, just being able to be present and be in the moment, blah, 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 blah. But, like, if I have a chance to prepare and I'm, like, and I can deliver lines that I've written or prepared for myself then yeah you know i can be funny i can be funny yeah and you were very funny in the acting challenges in the um the second episode the real gag with drag race is that like you never have time pr to prepare because <laughs> right. you're 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 constantly like out of time already late and exhausted so you're <laughs> you know you're constantly up against and they like they do that to you on purpose so that you get emotional reactions from people and and add some tension but it does mean that you're constantly in this kind of panic mode rather than like, oh, I'm at my most zen. Like, I'm ready to <laughs> perform at my best. Right. I'm in the exact relaxed atmosphere and mindset that I need <laughs> to perform at my optimum best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The episode that uh, you left on was also the episode where everyone got very emotional, too. So it seemed like that was yeah. kind of the emotional breaking point for everybody a bit. Yeah, I think by that point, you're just you're just beat down and you're uh you, you'd cry over anything at that point <laughs> <laughs> right right what lunch is I like yeah. ah! <laughs> a ball burns out in the makeup mirror it's you know yeah shattered ah! too <laughs> i love the maypole uh work oh that my you did. God. <laughs> oh my god uh they told me they actually told me not to do that they said it, it might come <laughs> But I, I risked it. <laughs> Another bold choice that I loved was the what ended up scaring the shit out of Jerry Hallowell, which was a remarkable moment. What a, what a pussy. <laughs> She's, uh, I mean, I've already, I've talked about this on, on many occasions already, but like she, 
she was a drag queen in the nineties. Right. She, she was just a drag queen. And like, she stood for so many things around female empowerment and like kind of fucking the system and all of these things that I was just, I was just in awe of her. Yeah. And, and then when we, when I met her, I was like, you've been replaced by a Jerry bot. Like what the <laughs> fuck is wrong? Really? So you really felt it that strongly, her, her uh, distaste oh, for her. So, yeah. Yeah. There was so much more than you even, than you saw on the show. Just like she really loved something Wong's David Attenborough because she just thought it was sweet and kind. And <laughs> from her, she, she was absolutely horrified by me and she didn't, yeah, she just didn't understand what I was trying to do. Yeah, it's, and it's just a it's just a warning. Like, don't move to the home counties because the Tories will get you. <laughs> so now we found out what actually happened. Then, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think she also blanched a little when Davina did the bit about posh spice. Did something? Was it something who had a needle and was like? Yes. And she squirted it her mouth, and she was like, "Oh no, don't do it! Oh no! Oh oh oh!" I wonder what she'd be like to watch a horror film with. You know? I know, I know. That, but that, I, you know, I wonder if it's because her daughter was on set. And her daughter is called Bluebell, so it really does like get you into her psyche. So. <laughs> wow! <laughs> what a name! I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disparaging Jerry's daughter. I'm sure she's lovely. But, oh, of um, course, but more more the mindset that parents sometimes get in when they're around their kids. Yeah. Now, did you have any personal favorite moments on the series? I love doing the sewing challenge because it was probably one of the only moments on the show where I was like, "I'm in my element. I can do this. I've got this. No problem." <laughs> like this is going to be fine. And the rest of the time it was like, you know, it was just harder. So yeah. the song challenge was like a moment that I actually had fun with. And I was like, Ooh, I got this. Um, <laughs> and you did too. I, yeah. Yeah. But I also, I, I really loved doing the girl group challenge and I know like that sent me home and all of that, but like we had so much fun doing it. Uh, writing the, writing the lyrics was really fun. We all helped each other. There. Yeah. The recording was just silly. <laughs> We actually worked really well together, yeah. despite how it appeared on the show. And and like, how often do you get to record a pop song and then perform it for a member of Little Mix? Like, that was just really cool, <laughs> right? And, and really fun. I was out. I was outperformed. Well, I mean, it's hard to compete with the Frock Destroyers, frankly. I mean, most yeah. most uh, yeah. combos working today in the pop field would have trouble against them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The Saturdays could never. Oh, never, never, ever. And uh, there were some sweet moments too. You know, on episode two, when you're soothing Blue Hydrangea, you know, you start to get a sense of people on this cast really looking out for one another, which you see later on as well. You know, when in, in many other instances when everyone's upset, which you see a lot on the American Drag Race. But there was something uh, just a little separate and sweeter about the UK cast. Yeah, I think that we all kind of just felt really grateful that we were on the show yeah, and sure. we, we, we weren't trying to compete against, you know, loads and loads of seasons of, and amp it up versus what had come before, even though there is all that history with the show, I think because it was UK, we kind of got like a bit of a, a soft reboot and we could just be ourselves a bit more and be human. And we all just understood how much pressure there was, there was on all of it because season one. Right. Exactly. And, and since the show as well, we all get on really well this tour has been so fun. We're like reconnecting or co making new connections with the people that you didn't get to spend as much time with. It's been really, really nice. How long is the tour going for? Uh, it's only two and a half weeks. So it's really short, just six cities, but like nice. We're doing big old theaters. So a couple thousand people a night, which is really fun. Oh, that's fab. Yeah. It's amazing. The people are amazing. And I'm, I feel like I'm getting to show people like what it is that I do and why I was on the show in the first place. Cause uh, I've been doing like aerial circus or angle grinding. If I can't do aerial circus in the venue, it's just really fun to like for me, but also for everyone on the on the show. I think to show off and be like, here's here's why I'm like, uh, I was already a working drag queen before the show, and this is what I do, and this is what I do well, and right. Um, it's really really nice to do that. I'm hoping that I get to this time actually go to your night at Bethnal Green. Uh, was it Bethnal Green? Yeah, Bethnal Green Working Men's Club, and. My night is and friends, which is on the first Saturday of every month. But I, I highly recommend it. Yeah, naturally, <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're a fan of it. That's a good. That's a reassuring. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you'll be at DragCon UK, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, I need to start thinking about what my booth is going to be and how that's going to work. But yeah, really excited. I think it's going to be really great. And 
it's like an all ages event, so it will mean lots of like younger fans as well, which will be cool. Yeah, definitely. And I'll be there. I'll be doing a panel with Sophie Anderson and some other folks. Oh my god, amazing! I know how great, right? I'm so excited about that. And um, what's your panel? Do you know what it's on? The panel is going to be. We don't have the title locked down yet, but it's going to be about self acceptance, self love, and sort of betting on yourself as part of that package in, in terms of your career being kind of dependent on or rather you know achieving your dreams is kind of dependent on putting the work in to um, facilitate self-love and self-acceptance she's perfect for that that's amazing isn't she yeah it'll be great and i'm really excited to to talk about that uh with all the folks there especially like you said with the younger folks uh which again is one of the great things about the show and and it's um I guess outgrowth with the drag con is the younger people. And it was nice again to see on the show, the discussions about how it's different now, uh, but it's always an evolving process. Absolutely. The younger fans has been the thing that surprised me the most. Like I knew that was a thing, but having all of these young girls who are my actual fans, it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it's so bizarre to me. It's so bizarre. Well, I'm um, sure you'll, you'll eventually get used to it. And I can understand why they're so into your, whole thing uh, because there's a very specific character and attitude that, that you present and i think that that resonates with a lot of people thanks you're welcome you mean the m messy slut yeah exactly exactly that touches the hearts and other places of many people yes. so, <laughs> well uh it's been lovely catching up with you and i look forward to seeing you in january yeah likewise fab all right so uh w the rest of your day is going to be what today uh, well, it's already nighttime here in Glasgow, so I'm going to go have a few bevies. Ah. And we've got a, we've got a show tomorrow night. So Enjoy a lovely little night, night off in Glasgow. and Thank uh, you. Yeah, and I'll, I'll chat with you soon. Thanks again, Crystal, and have a lovely night. Nice to chat. Bye, babes. Bye.